steadily it rises. Public preference for Lincoln Continental as the symbol for today's luxury motoring. Hey, hey, it's Jason ODB, the Lincoln Addict. Thank you guys for coming back. Uh, thanks for all the new subscribers. Uh, thanks for everyone that's checked out Lincoln Addict Podcast. Um, you can check out Lincoln Addict Podcast via most channels, most um, podcast apps. Uh, a lot of people listen through the Lincoln Addict uh, dot podbean dot com, um, which is the website, or they listen via Apple Podcast, the pre-installed po- purple app. Uh, they do the newer ones batch over to YouTube, so check it out. But this is a video that I've been wanting to do for a minute. I kind of did a couple videos and then my audio was a little messed up. So I kind of scrapped them and today was the day. So 64 Lincoln Continental convertible. This applies to both 64 and 65. Um, I'll show you guys in a little bit uh, what this looks like on a 65 with a round tubing, but here's what you need to know. It's only convertible, okay? It's not the sedan and it's only 64 it's only 65 okay now this isn't something i came up with john cashman the great john cashman who has since retired rightfully so to enjoy uh you know some great recreation in his retirement which Um, i need to give him a call sometime but john many years ago um working on these cars 40 plus years he found the defect um in his travels that basically for 64, 65, you have to put a reinforcement bar in between the cast pieces for the convertible top. So you got a lot of pieces, right? But you guys know oftentimes when that that deck lid comes up and you kind of look in there where um, you've got your rams and things like that that are putting the top up, um, there's these cast pieces that kind of hold everything together. There is an engineering defect in those can break. And what I wanna show you in this video is you can spend literally 15, 20, 30 minutes, probably max, after you go to your local hardware store, like a big box retailer, Home Depot is where I got my pieces from, but you end up getting a piece of square too. But you end up getting a piece of, it could be square tube, it could be round, I'm gonna show you on the 65 shortly. It's round on that car, which is totally fine. Um, You can get this aluminum piece if you wanna polish it or you can shoot it black or just get the steel piece um, and shoot it black. I think it might even come black already. But you literally, um, this is the, not that you necessarily need it, but that was the part from Home Depot, right? What I'm going to do, though, I'm talking right now, but I am going to do some hands-on, and I'm going to show you in just a couple minutes, I'm going to have my wife and son come out, and we're going to install this same type of piece in that car, and you're going to see how easy it is, all right? The key thing that you have to do is, number one, you got to put your, like, let's say your top, uh, whether your top is up or down, you're going to go through the cycle, and you're going to have your deck lid, like you see there, it's going to go up. And as that top is going down, let's say you're doing the down cycle, okay? As that top is going down, right before it goes fully in the trunk and it's flat, you either back it up a little bit or you just stop it right before it goes in in the trunk fully, okay? That's going to give an an opportunity for um, there to be less tension on all the parts. And you'll have your two helpers, and I'm going to show you guys this. They're going to lift up on the piece, and you're going to see those cast pieces will actually have a little bit of play in them. You're gonna take your cut piece, right? I'm gonna talk about that in a second. You're gonna put that on the one knob and then you're gonna put it on the other knob on the other side and boom, you're done. What that's gonna do is this piece is gonna stiffen up the left and right cast pieces that are part of the convertible mechanism, okay? You're thinking, hey, I've had my car, it's a 64, 65, I've had it all these years, right? Never had an issue, trust me just do it right a lot of people don't like messing with the tops or like you know they leave the top down all the time or they leave it up they're worried about it there's a lot of switches i get it there's relays there's all these different things john blair uh shout out to blair and Teresa, um aka tc you know they will always tell you it's best to cycle these cars just like you know you shouldn't leave your car sitting for five years without driving it you know you want to start it up you want to move it forward backwards you want to drive it if you can i drove the 64 today That's going to help keep the fluids going and all that stuff. Well, the same thing with the top. You know, I know, believe me, 
there's times when I'm just like, eh, I don't want to put the top down tonight. I'm going to get some fuel real quick. Okay, cool. But don't leave the top down, you know, for a year. You know, that's not a good thing to do. But I say all that because what you're going to end up doing is you're going to cycle the top, like I said, and you're going to install this piece. Now, John Cashman, um, he recommends cutting this piece to 31 and a half inches. All right. You're going to see when I measure this one in a few minutes, um, you'll see about where mine's at. And I ended up cutting mine just a hair too short. Uh, there will be play with this. Okay. There'll be a little bit of play depending on, you know, like, let's say if the, if the top is fully up, I'll show you on the red card. You can go in there and you can grab that bar and you can barely move it back and forth. That is okay. At certain points when that top is going down, if you put your hand on that and try to move it, it's going to be stiff as a rock. Okay. That is totally, that is totally normal for this little deal. But what you're going to end up doing is you're going to cut this to 31 and a half. You could then put it in there and kind of eyeball it, get your tape measure and kind of see how much more do you need to cut off. I'm going to show you what mine is. So you might be able to go a little less than 31 and a half to start with. But basically 31 and a half is a starting point to allow for you to put this in there, get an eyeball for how it's gonna look, and then either take, uh, I put mine in a vise. You could take a Sawzall with a good Sawzall blade. We'll cut this like butter. Um, you could take probably uh, a jigsaw that had a good metal blade on it. Um, a grinder, I guess if you were really you know hard up and you had a cutting wheel on it, that would work too. But I'm telling you, a Sawzall is really easy. If you don't own a Sawzall, you can, I'm sure, have a, a buddy lend you one. Um, I have a, a, a battery-powered one from Home Depot. I love that thing. But what you'll end up doing is you'll cut it to 31 and a half as a starting point. You'll lop off a little bit more. You'll find that sweet spot with your two helpers lifting up on the convertible top, again, because it's going to be almost fully in the trunk. This, you'll put it in there. Boom. It'll go right in, and you're done. That's it. Okay, this piece again will stiffen up right to left, east to west. It'll stiffen up and it'll, it'll ensure that there's never too much play in those cast pieces so that they don't break. You don't want those breaking. They're super expensive. If you can even find them, it's getting harder to get parts for these convertibles. Trust me, just do this. You might spend 20, 30 bucks, depending on if you have the tools or not. Um, if you want, John Brewer's been on the podcast before. I don't think his is on YouTube. Um, back then, I didn't have him batching over. Brewer sells a kit on his website and if you don't want to do any figuring he'll sell you the kit it comes with instructions but like i'll say um probably later in my video uh, i'm more of a hands-on guy and i figured if you've got a 64 or 65 convertible dude take a uh, take 20 30 minutes do this all right so let's jump in now i'm not going to cut this one today because i just don't need to i've already got one installed i'll probably use this on a friend's car or maybe i'll recut one eventually but what i would do is i would use my vice i would measure about 31 and a half you're going to draw your line okay i would normally use a sharpie then i would move this to about something like that um you could even go and take um i'll take usually some of these old rags or microfibers you could even wrap it around there in case you don't want to mar this up any um get this pretty tight and then you're going to take your sawzall and you're going to lop that right there okay now before we do the demo on the car over there i wanted to show you this is uh the car that i bought from robert you guys have seen me do videos about and when you look in here, you can't even really tell that. I mean, it looks factory to have that bar there. Um, my friend Tom, shout out to Tom Bennett from South Florida. He's got a 65, a resto mod, a really awesome car. His has it, and he actually still has his amp rack. I think his amps are underneath the bar. Um, but, you know, you, you know, it's not going to take away from anything. Aesthetically, again, you have the bar, but that's it. And if John Cashman recommends this, it's something you got to do. And he's been installing them. He installed them for 38 to 40, you know, 40 plus years, basically. He was the one, I think, that originally figured out the defect. But here's the thing I want to show you. This one, obviously, got a little bit of movement in it. That's okay. Um, this, you could just spin around there. And uh, that way, you don't see the little part I got to paint. And that is the round version of it. And you can see it fits right over that knob, if you will. 
And that's essentially what you're doing. So you can go and buy a kit, as I mentioned, from some of the usual suspects. I think Brewer sells a kit on eBay if you don't want to do any figuring, um, depending on your skill level. Um, or you can go, you can buy the piece, doesn't matter if it's round, steel, or aluminum. Cut it to about 31 and a half, start lining it up, kind of figure out exactly where it goes, and just know that you can have a little bit of play in it. It's gonna have it. And as you put the top down, um, and if you get in there with your hand, you're gonna get to the point where you it, there's there's so much tension on it, it won't move at all. So the main thing that you're trying to do is is keep those cast pieces, um, John basically said it was an engineering defect, and those cast pieces over time, um, with the pressure on them, they can crack and they could break. Now, as, I mean, I'm sure there's people out there that, you know, the car's been around since 64, 65, and they've never had an issue, but why not spend $20 and maybe 20, 30 minutes to do this, and you don't have to worry about it. Use the remote. This is a plug and play deal. Uh, some people have asked me, do you do you have to keep, you just have to keep pushing it. And in some of the videos that I've done, this would be the top up cycle. Um, the, the light in the video blinks like, you know, it kind of blinks a little bit, but all you're doing, and then when you hear the locks, you know, to take off. But some people, I think the way I recorded the video, it looked like, you know, it kept stopping and I kept hitting it and that's not the way it works. All right, let's jump over here and demo it. Now, when you cut it to approximately 31 and a half inches long, you're going to install it over the upper knob on the pivot bracket. That's attached to the hydraulic ram that you see here. Measure carefully using an assistant if you need to. The pipe or tube must be installed tightly so it can't escape over the top of the knob, the larger rivet. This keeps the pivot brackets from migrating inward and breaking the bottom cast iron bracket. If it's installed correctly and painted black, like John would always say, you can't even tell that it's not factory installed. All right, like I said, excuse the mess a little bit. Um, this this is the the bar that you can buy, as I mentioned earlier, from Home Depot. Okay, this is one that is not cut. So you can go there, you buy this. I don't know what the price is, probably 10 to $20 right now. The one that's in here, I'm gonna demonstrate to you in a second how to install it. Um, the one that's in here was cut. John always suggests starting at 31 and a half inches. That'll get you pretty close to where you need to be. And then you can kind of line it up and you can cut it. You'd rather cut it, you know, have a little bit more length and then have to shave it down a little bit or cut a little bit more off. This one, I cut a tad too short. Although this minor movement here is okay because believe it or not, at different positions within the cycle, there's going to be more tension and there's a point that you can't move this back and forth at all. But I would recommend cutting, you know, I, I, I went a little too short on the second cut that I did. Um, that's why I actually picked up this one and, you know, I'll end up cutting another one. And again, you can go, um, you have a couple options. You have this option, which is the aluminum. You could just do a regular little steel piece and paint it black like I did on this one. Um, or you can even get the round one. It does not matter. If and if you look right there okay that's what the top notch looks like um but john always recommends going from the, the top notch right here okay so the top is here the bottom's there but it gives you an idea so you can get the round one um i think i had bought a round one one time just to try it and i ended up using it for something else so the main thing is like what john would always say is you're gonna put like let's say you were putting the top down the top cycle is like almost it you know if i would have held it a little bit longer it would be totally down what you do is you put it to about that point right before it it's fully in the trunk that way it kind of takes the tensions off the rams and you're able to do this next step that we're going to do it's easiest to have a helper on this side and on this side and what they'll be able to do is put their hand underneath this main convertible part. You can kind of see, I could probably do it with one person or you could, but you'll have one on each side. And when you lift this up, believe it or not, there's going to be a little bit, it's going to relieve the tension here. And then you'll be able to fit that bar right in there without having to take anything apart here or anything apart there. Now, again, the big thing is, is you start with 31 and a half inches and then you could always 
lop off a little bit more. I would just get like a sawzall. You could probably do it with a good um, jigsaw if you had like a metal blade, depending on, you know, the type of tools that you have. Um, I put it in a vise, I think, and I just took a sawzall and I mean, it literally slices through it like butter. Now for reference, I've got the tape measure all the way on that side. If you come over here and you take a look, it's about a tick mark past 31. So there you so go. So let's get in my son here, my wife. They're lifting up on it. I just took the bar out real quick to demo this. You're gonna put it on that side, on that knob. And you're gonna see there's a little play on that side. You see that? What you're gonna do then is you're gonna come here and you could push with your forearm a little bit if you're holding a phone. Come up with it a little bit. Down, down, and then boom. It's gonna fall right in there. Thanks guys. So obviously it would have been a little easier if I didn't have my phone or my camera, I should say, in the other hand. But what I did was I took it out to demo. It was a little bit easier to get it in. And what you do is when you push on that, you saw possibly those cast pieces over there. There's flex there, believe it or not. You wouldn't think that. So when you push on that side, you get it to a point where you can see there a little bit. I think one time I used a, a light mallet when I first did it and it kind of taps and it just goes right around that little knob and then it goes right on there. But again, my suggestion would be to cut it 31 and a half, which is what John always said, then kind of put it in there, get an eyeball. And then if you, if you got to take off a quarter inch or less or a little bit more, that gives you an idea. So there you have it. I've been wanting to do this video for a little bit. Um, basically, John would share this information for free all the time in the lincolnforum.net. The lincolnforum.net, they've had um, some upgrades they're going through. So I know some of you, including myself, you go to this, um, you go to the website and it's down. And it's like, you know, that's something they've been working through, the whole coding stuff. They're trying to upgrade it. I don't know what the deal is there, but basically I just wanted to kind of demo to you literally I had my wife and son come out they were probably weren't even outside two minutes walk straight to the car lift it up on that you'll have your two helpers maybe lift it up a little higher they'll drop it a little bit and as you're trying to fish that in there and get it just perfect you'll find that sweet spot and it will go right in the big thing is you may have to trim a little bit that's why brewer sells the kit with the instructions but for someone that's like a do-it-yourself or kind of like me um, you know, I'm not the most mechanically, uh, you know, inclined person, uh, but this kind of stuff I do enjoy doing. I do enjoy sharing this as well. So leave a thumbs up, leave a comment, share this. If you've got a friend, family member, someone that's got a 6465 convertible, they really should do this. There's really no reason to say, no, I'm not going to do it. Even if you already had custom interior and you had amps there or whatever you had there, you could still make it work. I'll try to drop a photo in here of Tom's. Um, I shot Tom's car. It was like the, really the first professional photo shoot I did. And it landed on the cover of All Time Low Magazine. And um, I was at his house. Thanks again, Tom, for, you know, having me over many times. And um, we did some photos there. Then we went up to a park and I was able to get some, you know, pretty good exclusive access to some awesome uh, angles and, and just, you know, aspects of that amazing 65, which, by the way, I want to let you guys know is for sale. Um, it's not a cheap car, but if you are interested, hit me up and, uh, Lincoln addict podcast at gmail.com. Let me know. Uh, Tom is, um, I think he's, he's ready to sell it. I think so I'll throw a couple more photos in here, check them out. So in closing again, apologize for the mess. I've got, uh, the amp here and a couple things just kind of sitting here temporarily, um, until we get some other things done and uh, all this will be nice and clean. So don't, um, you know, don't think I don't take care of my cars. I do. I love this thing and uh, appreciate you guys watching. So, yeah, that's about it. Going to go ahead and wrap up this video. And thanks again for all the support. Check out Lincoln Attic Podcast. However you check out podcasts, you can also go to LincolnAttic.com and buy a shirt or sticker. I really appreciate it. Peace. The Lincoln Continental is the big, roomy luxury car. It will be motordom's symbol of quality. An automobile and a tradition.